किसी ब्रह्मा ने So this today in the evening first I will talk about the for what we should be and also Padmanabha has asked some clarifications last time I spoke so that also I will take up now. Since I believe it is. So when we are singing Brahmanandam, that line I was looking for the key which is there which is open, what I have to say. And uh, every time I wait for some sign from previously, I used to go and ask her, what should I talk about? Then sometimes she'd say, go talk about what you want. So then I have to look. Then what people say to me or what I, is the, comes in the bhajan area for a clue as to what I should say. So, so Kevalam Jnana Murti, the Brahman then comes. One of the Kevalam is all alone. The Sadhguru is all alone. And uh, the other is Jnana Murti, is a Vigraham, Rupa, that is a form, Narayana, of Jnana, only that. So we are a mix up of many things, our feelings, our emotions, our uh, memories, all this with us. So this is what we have to go towards. So I quickly just recapitulate what I said last time of your Vaikun Teka this day. So he says that uh, Bhagavan Mahadeva talking to Parati Devi says in the Guru Gita, he says that Naguro Radhikam Tattur Naguro Radhikam Tapaha. There's no Tattvam, no idea of religion or philosophy which is higher than the Guru. There is no tapas which is higher than the Guru. Tattva jnana param nasti. Then these the fruits of religion, of wisdom, of knowledge, there is nothing higher than that. To such a Guru who teaches all these things and who is the embodiment of all that, we do Namaskaram, we do Prana. So I gave this example of how when Vishwamohan was fasting, we were all fasting and uh, we, Sadhguru asked him to uh, get the grape juice and give all of us to drink and then he said when the fast is lost, we were all fasting without water and then now suddenly Sadhguru sent to drink fast at like 7 o'clock in the evening, we could have comfortably gone on until the next day. But then Sadhguru, what Sadhguru was teaching is flexibility. You do what God wants. You don't do what you want. So even when Guru says something which is odd, which is difficult, which is different from what we expect, we follow. Two reasons. One is that the Guru has reasons which we don't know, which we can't understand. 
And the second one is that the Guru is teaching us to be flexible. So we shouldn't think that I will do only this. I just think we will do what the Guru says. So, and circumstances come to us, difficult circumstances, circumstances which are, appear to be very nice, but then uh, we are not comfortable with. We must look for the Guru's hand and what the Guru would want us to do. And sometimes it may be something different, it might be something difficult. But then we will find something in the circumstances which will indicate to us, which will show us what Sadhguru wants us to be doing. So, we just, all we have to do is to keep looking and then we will find. So, now we have to, so then also we have that previous one, the Guru that becomes that one. So Sadhguru was sitting and talking about Uddhava Gita. Then somebody said, Sadhguru always keeps talking about looking at the feet of God, if you concentrate on the feet of God. And uh, it's argumentative person likes to see. I mean, show that, I mean, I know more than you, that sort of person he was. So he said, uh, but when I'm in the office, I often see the smiling face of God and I want to meditate on that. Krishna also says in the Gita, meditate on the smiling face of God, but Sadhguru is insisting that we should look at the feet only and meditate. So then Sadhguru said, Sri Krishna said that to Uddhava. I am saying this to you. For a sadhaka, it is necessary to have humility, to have the ability to walk in the path. For that we have to look at God's feet. Meditating on God's feet brings us, brings us humility, brings us the ability to walk in His path. Because when you look at His feet, you know where He is walking. And then He will show us the leader to what we should do. So Sadhguru said, that, said, that was for Uddhava, this is for you. Uddhava has already climbed to that ex extent that He doesn't have to look at the feet anymore. He has to look at God's face, that's enough for Him. So, the tattvam, the idea, what was in the Bhagavatam, this person misunderstood, he thought Sadhguru is not teaching that. Sadhguru is teaching what is necessary for us at this moment. And Sadhguru is teaching, is from person to person it is different. Because from person to person we are different, that's why. So, the truths are there, but they have to be explained to us by a guru. It can't be just assumed by us that this is the meaning. We can learn it from the guru directly. Or we can't directly, guru is not present. We pray and then we read the shastra, then Sadhguru will show a way in which, when we read that passage, there will be some point in which we will remember something which Sadhguru has told us and then we'll be able to really uh, understand and enjoy that part of the Shastra. The reading of the Shastras, we shouldn't take it as duty, we should take it as exploration. When we read it, we find new, new things. In the same Gita, we read, every time we read it, if we are careful, if we meditate and pray and then see what does Sadhguru say, go to the puja room, say a few slokas, then compose your mind and then it's do japa. Once you get to do japa and you're comfortable with japa, then you meditate a little and then immediately don't go out when you're in that meditative mood, go out. Read some of the shastras because all the mind is calm, mind is clear. When you read the shastras, you're able to understand and when you're able to understand, you're able to follow. What is the thread of the teaching there? And then you can practice slowly from there, practice follows. So he says, 
After that, the next line which he says is, Fattuni ala falam nasti. So often we think that, I mean, yes, said like this in the Gita, said like this in the Upanishad, all that, but that's not practical, you can't do that. But actually, a sadhaka, he believes that there's nothing higher than this, these ideas of spiritual life. So he feels that it is practical, something which we can do. So, Kevalam Yana Murti, you see what happens is we have ideas, we have impulses in our life, which we want to do this, we want to do that. And because of that, we find a reason uh, when it, to understand the Shastras the way which we want. So somebody once said, uh, uh, see, even Yudhishthira said one lie, then what else? And so you were saying, all his life Yudhishthira never said a lie. But this one thing you are holding on to, why don't you hold to the rest? So, see, this is a reading of the Shastras which is not dictated by wanting to know. It is not dictated by the idea that I want to know something. Dictated by the idea I must find a justification for what I am doing. So, you take it and make it what you want. So, you say that, yes, even Krishna uh, uh, told you to start to say that, so that's it. Quite all right. Why is this? That you want to say lies, and then you're covering that up. So that there are two things in that. One is that you're doing something which you think is wrong, and you're feeling it's wrong, and you're crushing that conscience which is there. Something wrong has been done. The jiva inside wants to come out of that, wants to deal with it, not to do it. But then what do you crush it by doing ideas of spirituality which are wrong? So, Jnana Murti, your Guru is always Jnana Murti, it's a uh, form of knowledge only, it's just an idol of knowledge, nothing else exists here. Yeah. And uh, here also Bhagavan says, Tattva Jnana Paramnasti, there's nothing higher than that. So, this is something which we can measure and see in our lives. What are we doing? Is it when we say something about somebody or is it like this, is it like that? Is it because that we want to give a reason that why we have done something? Yeah, he was like that, that's why I did it. That's one thing. Or is it he was like this, he did like this? We are sitting and living in that past because we want to feel that we have been heard and we want to feel that. I go over that feeling of self, with self-pity and with the feelings of, uh, you know, uh, feeling nice to oneself that, you yeah, know, I must, I have suffered, I'm such a power person and I've suffered and other people have got, have been happy. Everybody feels that their lives are unique, everybody feels that what they've gone through, nobody has gone through. But then if you look at other people's lives, then they have also gone through things which they also feel is unique. So we must understand that these thoughts which we are having about ourselves, these memories which we are having, are selective. Only some things we remember. The things we want to remember, only we remember. We don't remember difficult things. So you say, now the year is ending, you say, tell me the bad things Somebody asked me, tell me all the bad things I've done in the course of this year. I want to remember more than five or six. But if they ask me the good things I've done, that'd be a big list. Because why? Because these are more comfortable to remember. These are thoughts which are more comfortable to remember. These are things which are, we would like to remember. Those are things which we are uncomfortable about. We don't like to remember it because it, sure, it makes us feel that we are not good enough. It makes us feel that we could, uh, I could be better. So it's a very uncomfortable load to bear. So what we do is we just put it down and say it's not us. But we are really not putting it down. We are taking it and putting it inside the pocket only. 
This is where Puri is on the head. So, what, uh, we are now going into a new year. So, when we are going to new year, we are carrying all our punyas and papas which we have collected in this way. We should look over our year and think what it is. Why is it that we have done the things that we have should not have done, though we have seen ourselves doing it year after year? Why is it that we have not done the good things which we plan to do at the beginning of the year? So when we look at that, then we will see how we can improve ourselves and then go into the new year. We sub submit everything at Sadhguru's feet, the whole and everything which has happened and say, Sadhguru, this is all what has happened. Let me not have the feelings of unhappiness, the feelings of sorrow. Let me not have the unnecessary hopes, the expectations which become disappointments. Let me be able to be a sadhaka the way you would like me to be. Being a sadhaka does not mean that we are going to leave the world or anything like that. Sadhguru always said that to me. A spiritual life is compatible with the ordinary human life. So, we have seen her living that life and most of us have been able to, to an extent, follow that. So, with Sadhguru's grace, we should be, Sadhguru said, there is place either for the ego or God in the mind. So we must make the ego smaller and make the place for God bigger so he can come and stay. And slowly that, as we consciously look and see that, are we doing the things that Sadhguru likes? Then the year will become, when we go into the year, we will be able to discover new things happening. It won't be just the same thing which happens year after year. But in this year, we must have more exciting spiritual adventures. We should be able to find out those things which we don't like to do and why we don't like to do it. Is it really that there's something about it which is bad that we don't like? Or is there something which is inconvenient for us that we don't like? Or is it that we associate with somebody whom we don't like, that's why we're not doing it all that. Before we do something, we can just look at that action. Or after we've done, done it, we can look at us and say, why we have done these things. And then we can go into it the way Sadhguru would like us to do it. In Sadhguru's grace, I hope that everyone, especially myself, will be able to do all these things. Now, Padmanabhan had asked one question. He said that, uh, will you tell us, Padmanabhan? The question you asked. No, no. We were, we were talking about asking questions to the Guru. How yeah. Sadhguru always uh, liked questions. Yes. Rupa said that uh, Sadhguru liked uh, people to ask questions. But uh, I felt that Sadhguru always said uh, anything cold should be unquestioningly accepted. Or obeyed. And uh, Sadhguru also is told examples of uh, if the soldier starts asking explanations from the general uh, about the orders and all that, then the war cannot be fought. Or if you start questioning the doctor each and on all the how this is going to work, why you are giving this and all, then the doctor will say, now you go and find another doctor. These examples Sadhguru had said in general speech. So I thought uh, they were a bit contradictory. So, uh, these are two different situations when Sadhguru is teaching, when Sadhguru is seeing people are coming in the beginning to Sadhguru, then Sadhguru will expect, in fact, not ask, that they should ask questions as to why they are doing this, why do we have to, uh, why do we have to do these things, why do we have to, and to, Take the Guru only after 
examination after understanding who the Guru is. So, and uh, Sadhguru didn't mind anything if they tested Sadhguru and all that. So, then if they asked questions, if they argued with Sadhguru, Sadhguru sat and explained with them in the beginning stages. And if they had doubts as to what Sadhguru was, when Sadhguru was, took sannyasa, she was a young woman and a very good looking woman. So, there was this person who used to come and do kainkaryam and go. He was a young man. And he used to come in the evening from office and then be in Sri Piram until about 8.39 and then go. So in those days, Sri Piram was very small in 1975. There was just one room and a kitchen come office and a big terrace where that should used to happen. Then... Uh, when there's no darshan, we sat in the garden and sometimes said sastran, sometimes. And we used to talk about Sadhguru and all that and go back. Because in those days there was no announced darshan. Suddenly she would say she was doing darshan. Then we'll try and inform each other about it, those who are there. And so people used to come whenever they could to Sri Piram to see whether there's darshan or not. So then this man used to come every day and watch, I mean, come and uh, go, he used to do kind of and go, some work or other. So, admittance at that time was only up to the staircase and sometimes to the office kitchen, otherwise not, generally not. So, then there was another person who was wondering, why is this young man coming like this when Sadhguru is all alone? And so, he waited and hid in the bushes outside there and he watched to see why is this man coming. And he saw this man coming and sitting outside there, sitting outside Sri Piram, on the steps there, talking to Vishnu Mohan and discussing various things, especially his own difficulties and crying and talking about it and all that. Then afterwards, this person who was watching came and told Sadhguru, I had this doubt why this happened and I came and told Sadhguru, and I, so I watched, I found this is the only thing which is happening. So I felt bad about it that I had a doubt like this. Sadhguru didn't feel anything about it. Sadhguru didn't feel annoyed about it. Sadhguru, so, the so main thing is that you, when you're, uh, you're coming to the Guru, the Guru does not mind being tested. So that is the problem today. Why there are so many uh, false Gurus today, so many difficulties people have is that they blindly take the Guru without seeing whether that Guru has. See, the Shastras are very clear. They say that, uh, you see, well, Taitha Ramsha, they say, among, uh, when the boy is going up into the world, he says that, when you have a doubt as to what to do and what not to do, then you look at us, among us, the teachers are sitting and uh, telling, among us, those of us who are learned, who are kind nature, who are not cruel, who are good in nature and got good habits and see what we do and follow that example. So, it is expected that in the Shastras and all that, who is the Guru Adi Shakra explains at length. So, all these things are there for a person to know what a Guru is like. But yet they go to gurus, why? They go to gurus to get something done. They are not going to gurus to find the way to God. They are going to gurus for a solution of problems. That's right, okay, that happens. But then when you are with the guru, if you are able to understand the nature of the guru, you should be able to see, know whether the person is greedy, whether the person is... For example, about... Uh, the year, I think, the year now is the 46th of 47. The 44th year when he was traveling, I was told this about by one Ahubhidamat uh, Shishya. He said when he was traveling, one son and uh, this man and his father was there to see him. And uh, this is a long time ago, in the 50s. This was. And uh, the dear said, oh, uh, what are you doing? So he said, I'm a school teacher. So he said, 
and what's your son? She said, son, he's an engineer. So he said, see, every year you give 50 rupees to the amount. And your son is an engineer, he can afford to give 500 rupees to the amount. Then he explained, the mat is not going after money, but the mat needs money to run. So you are the fiduciary, you have to protect it. See, that is different from saying that, I want this, I want that, buy this and give it to me. That's a different thing. That's a different thing. The guru is asking for something personally or saying that, oh, I want that and why can't you do this for me? There are so many gurus who do that. We don't know because that guru is a person who hated to accept anything. I remember once a big argument between Kamal and Sadhguru. So I went to ask what is happening. So no pins, Sadhguru said. So I said, what is it you need pins? So Kamal said, no, no. She gave Sadhguru a pin to use. And Sadhguru said, this is not my pin, this is your pin. I want my pin, I want to use your pin. Why should I give it? So that level of hierarchy is, that level of not accepting is what is characterizing a guru. Unfortunately, in the world today, they don't look at that. It's look at somebody who's got a big crowd coming to them. When I went there, did I get anything? Then something nice happens to me if I went there, so that's why I go there. So if you don't choose your guru properly, if you don't look at that. For example, I heard about one person who was doing pravachanams. North India, for people who do pravachanams, they have, uh, they take huge fees. They are only uh, not uh, swamis, or they are people who, like Asana Babu, are just teachers. They are only Katha people, like Sri Vatsa Jairam Swami and all that. But there they are idolized and given a lot of respect. and So they are able to charge enormous amounts and that's how they become so powerful and big. But this person I heard about, I don't know, but I think it is true from what I saw him on TV and I met him once also. I think it is true. He used to charge huge amounts for his discourses. Ten days discourse, which would ask for 20 lakhs and all that. Then, once the ashram was built and they had enough money to run the ashram, he said, I cannot teach without taking daksha. So I will come and do the full Bhagavatam for you. Ten days I will come and teach. But you just give me ten rupees and that's not enough. I won't take anything more than that. So that is the approach which Sadhguru would have approved of you. You take what you need and not more than that. You don't take what you can take. But you take what you need. So a Guru like that you can say, yes, this man is worth following. But then you just look at somebody who has got a crown, who has got an impressive ashram, who has got some money. It's a wrong choice and you are to be responsible for going to that place. So that's what it is. So asking questions at that stage, as a, or asking questions when you have got doubts about God, yes, Sadhguru and all that. But when Sadhguru gives instructions on sadhana, on Kaijaria and on that. Then you don't have to be, ex it doesn't have to be explained to you. So, Guru wants it done, then yes, you do it. You don't worry about the why and the where. As you go on, you will know. As you do your Kaijaria, you will find the reasons why. Sadhguru so, says not to do this, to do that. Then you find the why your Sadhguru so, has said that. On the other hand, if you think that I am doing it, then the effect of the Kaingaryam is much less than what it could have been. It is that physical act of doing the Kaingaryam, that blessing will come to us. But the transformation which comes, the jnana which comes, it doesn't follow. So that's how it is. Sadhguru expects that everything should go together, everyone should go together, they should think and follow what Sadhguru says. Without question, so it was something that should be done. But on the other hand, other matters when you can't understand about God, about the teaching, Sadhguru expects to be you to clarify what you want to know or to have a mind that Sadhguru will make it clear to me soon. Then that will happen also. That will also become.
श्री सद्गुरु आश्रम श्री कृष्ण आश्रम